Hi everyone and welcome to Hot Wallet. Today we have Jamie Rogozinski, entrepreneur, businessman, and the founder of the popular Reddit forum, Wall Street Bets. Jamie joins us to discuss his views as a non-crypto guy on the current climate of crypto. Hi, Jamie. Thank you so much for joining us. So could, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so Jamie Rogozinski, I founded Wall Street Bets. Uh, at least that's what I'm best known for. Um, and I do everything and anything related to, I used to say stock market, but now I'm now I've deviated into basically any type of thing that has a number that you can purchase for different prices and it wiggles on the screen, right? So this is going to be crypto, this can be gambling, betting, uh, stocks, etc. right? And I love disruption and I love this uh, convergence of new technology and new demographics that are kind of growing into this world. And I am very mischievous. Okay. Well, Jamie, so we were talking about the Luna crash recently. And for those who don't know, in May, Terra's UST and the cryptocurrency Luna lost nearly $45 billion in 72 hours. So this caused a major domino effect, the demise of Three Arrows Capital, which led to many more crypto companies being completely screwed. So it was a mess. Yet, Jamie, you said you were proud of the crypto market for screwing that up. What do you mean by that <laughs> statement? Well, they did a big boy screw up, or you know, it's, it's it's something that you can only mess up if you've gotten mature enough to be able to screw up at that magnitude, right? For the longest time, uh, people, myself included, thought that crypto was just a bunch of coins whose numbers goes up and down, right? Like Bitcoin, I followed it when it started. It's a cool concept. It's a great exercise and it's experiment. Let's make digital currency. They got the economic and the technological components. And as the years went by, you just started seeing a lot of other Bitcoin improvements or wannabes or cash grabs. And so I stopped paying much attention to it. And I think a lot of people are uh, uh, like myself continue to have those views on, on crypto. And then luckily I, I uh, uh, decided to reevaluate my stance on it and realized that there's an entire ecosystem. I'm talking about the DeFi ecosystem, like the, this, all these hypotheticals that people used to uh, bring up in the early days of, of Bitcoin are actually already here, right? So what does that mean? Uh, you have Luna Crash. I'm going I'm to describe it with terms that perhaps regular finance people are familiar with, right? Luna uh, Crash was pr uh, promoted by fancy derivatives, right? These, these uh, collateralized uh, instruments full of garbage collateral uh, that was being let out to, well, let's just call it the, to, to, to borrowers that perhaps didn't need to use that. And there was all sorts of different contagion involved with that. And all these things start uh, sounding a lot like the financial crisis, including that figure you pointed out, $45 billion. I've seen different numbers around, but Lehman Brothers was worth I believe $60 billion before it crashed, right? So that's a huge company. And that's how much money Luna brought down once everything settled. That means that the, the impact, the amount of money lost was the same as in the financial crisis with this one crash, obviously. I'm not counting about the whole economy. The contagion factor, right? The sophistication of these instruments that nobody understood with really fancy multi-syllable descriptions <laughs> like you only get to do that when you've grown enough. And so the reason why I'm proud is because crypto, although it started, what, 10 or so years ago, has already caught up to the entire financial system that the world has taken thousands of years uh, to, to, to screw up to that level. So very soon, the DeFi market, the crypto world is going to surpass uh, finance in terms of what types of problems they're going to bump into. So as a non-crypto guy, you sound very confident about that statement. Make that make sense for me. Which particular statement? There's a lot of them. There. <laughs> you sound very confident about crypto. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the writing's on the wall. I think we're missing regulation. And once that's done, then we're, we're good to go. Like, So it's, it's a pretty known fact that crypto's here to stay. Uh, countries are going to 
pick where they stand. You have like uh, El Salvador is one end of the spectrum, right? Literally adopting as a legal tender. And then you have, let's say, I don't know, China uh, as the other end of the spectrum, which is just completely uh, at least attempts to ban it or to, to take control of it. And most other countries are going to land somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, the reason why I bring that up is because once all those chips settle, once the countries, at least the ones with the major economies, define where their role is, then uh, the legitimacy is of of the crypto market and the advantages that it that, that it offers are going to explode. Right? Why am I so bullish on it? Because it is so much better. Right? Uh, it's so much more sophisticated. The tools, and I don't know how sophisticated your audience is, but um, in the event that you have some that know what the uh, variable, um, sorry, the, 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 the volatility decay component of a, a leveraged ETF, right? This is, these are a lot of words, right? But these are like basically like a thing that you can buy in your broker and it moves up and down a lot and it has a problem that it goes to zero in the long term. Uh, there's applications for this, but crypto figure out how to emulate that, but fix the problem where it doesn't go to zero using fancy math. That's something that can't happen in the other world. So there's really, important real world advantages to the level of sophistication. But now I'm going to use an example that's uh, a lot more uh, tangible, right? Which is how much more efficient it is in terms of uh, the information that, that is disclosed through the blockchain, right? Like the stock market provides a ton of information for the world to understand what's happening or to speculate on investments or to do analysis, whatever. The information that you get from the stock market has to go through people and companies and filters and whatever. The blockchain, the information is infallible and it's transparent. So it allows you to actually create better analysis on anything that you want to. What's happening with the company? What's happening with all these things? You get it real time. You get it instantly. I used to look at people and say five years ago, and I would hear a podcast where someone would say, I have decided to take on a challenge where I'm going to not use fiat anymore. I'm only going to use Bitcoin or whatever uh, to pay my rent and this and my, like all these things. And I would sit there listening to this and I'd be like, all right, that's, you know, I applaud the effort. Uh, it's cute that, you know, but I would never do that to myself. The poor guy is just going to like, just be kind of nickel and dog. I, I don't know how he's going to do like it, but obviously he did. Cri cryptocurrency I, is so complex, Jamie. That's the thing. Like, how can I expect my 70 year old father to get with the program? So here's so 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 I'm almost up to that. So this person <laughs> says, I'm only going to use Bitcoin. And I said to myself, you are crazy, an extremist, and you're making a statement. Fast forward five years, me, the guy that does like fiat, the one that's not an extremist, I'm not making points. I stumble into crypto uh, head first. And I start using it because I have to, not because I want to, but because it's part of these things that I have, these projects I'm working with. And at one point I realized that I had money in crypto and I'm going crazy trying to use my banking to, to make transfers between countries and people and this and that and the other. And I realized I don't need fiat anymore. Like I have it, obviously I'm not got to that because it's straight up better. Like, and I keep it to myself because I don't want to sound like the crazy dude. Like once you use it, it's better. But to your question, your, your dad knows how to use crypto <laughs> in much the same way he knows how to use like a credit card. You can get uh, a crypto debit card. So you have a, so how do you, open, let's, let's, let's walk about the mechanics. Let's not talk about the, the computer geeks that are talking about cryptology, right? You download an app, you say, would you like to register? Sure. What's your name and email? There you go. Password. Uh-huh. There you got it. What do you like to do? I don't know. I want to buy crypto because everyone's talking about it. All right. You put your credit card number in. So far, it's like the it's like using Amazon or like using whatever. And all of a sudden, you have the little app that shows you, you own crypto, right? And there you go. You've now owned crypto. If you say, okay, but now I want to use crypto to pay for stuff. And I don't want to have to do a headache. It's like, great. I will take out the Visa card or MasterCard that pulls directly from my app. And now I can swipe things in the store the way I'm used to. You don't need to know how things work behind the scenes. But you'll all of a sudden, or people will realize that when it comes to uh, transacting, when it comes to fees, when it comes to the, the speed, uh, which things happen. And if you do things that are complex or in big numbers, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's no, no, uh, no contest there. So do your parents know how to work crypto? Excellent question. And I think you're <laughs> going to call me out on this one. Uh, I'm actually going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes, because my dad one day said to me, he's mid seventies, is an economist PhD. He's a smart man, but he's but you know this is definitely 
past his technological advantage. He calls me one day. He goes, "Hey, I bought crypto and it went to zero. How come?" And then I'm like, "I, uh, you know," and I it surprised me. Shows me screenshot. Well, not screenshots. He literally took pictures of his screen. Uh, and, and sure enough, he opened up a Coinbase account and he bought a bunch of coins. And obviously, he got a. I don't know if you're allowed to use bad words here, but like a bad coin, <laughs> uh, the kind that just uh, 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 you know go to zero quickly. And, and so he learned his lesson there. But he had done it all on his own. He didn't tell me he was going to do it. So the answer is yes. I'll never forget you telling me get rich quick is the same as get poor quick. That's correct. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. What a wise individual I must have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. So the upcoming midterm elections are coming up and it is a divided Congress and stocks, for instance, historically perform much better in a divided Congress. Do you see Bitcoin staying correlated with traditional stocks? I, I, you know, I could make something up, but I prefer to be honest. I have no idea why they're correlated. Uh, I, I haven't, I admit I haven't done too much to try and figure that out. And I can come up with assumptions, but those assumptions are just that. I don't know the answer to that. So I can't tell you how it's going to behave relative to like uh, geopolitical stuff. I could tell you about the stock market and how that's going to behave. And if you tell me uh, that they're, that they're correlated with Bitcoin, which they appear to be, but once again, it's premature. In that case, I can tell you what Bitcoin's going to do, but because it doesn't make sense, it I, I don't I choose not to believe it. Uh, there's a lot of things right now that aren't making sense, like gold uh, is down. Like really, the other day, I pull up charts. Gold is really down, and inflation is through the roof, right? Um, I think like your first day of econ class, they tell you gold is the inflation hedge, right? Like, right, inflation is through the roof. Then why is the dollar so high, right? And then you start thinking about these geopolitical things. Well, maybe the demand because it's a reserve currency. And, but, you know, like bonds and stocks are both down also, right? There goes your risk parity, your, you know, your 60-40. Uh, asset managers, like that, nothing that we think we knew is actually playing out the way it's supposed to. Uh, so with that big context in mind, I wouldn't make any safe assumptions based off of historical precedents as to what it's going to do uh, in the upcoming midterm elections or the results thereafter. So what about after regu regulatory clarity? Do you think we can kind of see less correlation after that? Uh, no, no, I, I don't think it has to deal with regulation. I think that it, I think it has to do, if I were to guess, I'm going to guess that the same money, like uh, big banks and institutional money is going into crypto. It's clear, right? I'm uh, speaking with, with you about this and, uh, you know, from Forbes talking about crypto, everyone, Wall Street Journal, like the street, oh, sorry, uh, everyone's talking about crypto now. Uh, the investment banks are also investing in crypto. Everyone's got funds, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, da, 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 JP Morgan. Uh, so now people are starting to move in unison. So because it's the same individuals that are making decisions in the stock market based off of whatever the logic is, it's going to spill into the crypto. That's my, uh, that's my assumption there. Um, you know, so in that in, in that sense, uh, the regulation I don't think is going to make too much of an effect. What I think regulation will do is it's going to split the garbage from the good. Right now, it's a huge mix of both, and it takes um, some work to to split the two aside. And the institutional money seems to just have done their homework and is only going for the good stuff. So regulation comes in; it's going to get rid of the stuff that no one's touching, anyways. Stuff like what? Uh, well, the the the, the crap coins. I <laughs> I know I what you're saying. Point. I know what you're saying. So let's pivot <laughs> a little bit from markets and let's go into the tech side of crypto. On paper, Ethereum is a decentralized network, but this is actually mm -hmm. the case, especially after the merge from proof of work to proof of stake. Once again, so like I've learned a lot about crypto in the year and a half that I've been uh, involved with it, and I sometimes make myself sound less informed than I am. But I also not afraid to say when I straight up don't know something. Uh, my, in, my, my instincts tend to be spot on though. I don't understand how Ethereum can do an update. Okay. I understand forks. Uh, I got that. I understand decentralized uh, networks. I understand. I, I, the tech, I'm also a computer engineer, so I understand that the logic and the, the, the implementation behind it. I don't understand how, when you have a thing that is decentralized, a group of people, individuals, whatever, whatever, how, however you categorize, they can push a button and then they can make a change to the thing that is not supposed to be changeable. Um, you know, obviously people might that know about this will be screaming at me that they forked that is not even the same thing. I'm sure it's, you know, I'm sure the explanation is logical, but the net effect of whatever that was they did was not a decentralized action. The decentralized actions by definition should be impossible. 
right? I don't care what ex, you know explanation that makes logical sense. The fact that there was decision making by people, by humans, that however they decided to do this, all congregated it, like now it's no longer decentralized. So I don't I don't believe that it's uh, decentralized in that sense. However, I don't think that's bad, right? There's uh, the, 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 we're on the risk that the people reach that conclusion. Decentralization purely has a lot of benefits. Centralization purely has a lot of benefits, right? But they also have their problems. I think that as they meet in the middle, that's where you're gonna get the sweet spot. Uh, and I believe that some level of, of centralization is going to offer benefits uh, to the greater audience. There will always be people who have the need for a fully decentralized, but the majority of people, and therefore adoption and, uh, and, and maturity of these assets are gonna be when they have a hint of that. But a lot of people are in crypto because it's decentralized. What does this merge have to say about the future of, okay, I see you're, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? I am because <laughs> you made an assumption. Can you prove what you just said? Okay, well. You, do you know that people are in crypto because it's decentralized? I certainly don't. Okay. I think they're in crypto because they want to get rich. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's a reason. That's a reason. But let's say someone is in crypto because it's decentralized. What does that have to say about like, the future. If it's not decentralized, why shouldn't I just go to the bank? Uh, once again, there's a flaw in your question because it's the crypto doesn't make the decision as to whether it be decentralized or not. Bitcoin is fully decentralized. If that individual that has the necessity for decentralization, right? So you'll have to read into all these words I'm carefully picking here. If an individual has a need for fully decentralized platform, they can go to Bitcoin, the first one, like the Genesis, and it's there. They don't have to reinvent things. Uh, if an individual doesn't care to understand the nuance, the complexities as to what exactly what I just said actually means, then they can go to Ethereum and they will not know the difference. It's a thing you buy it, you can transfer, you can pay it, it goes up, it goes down, you can you know participate in NFT stuff. Uh, and they don't necessarily uh, appreciate or even know or will ever feel the difference between fully decentralized and not. Um, those in, so the, the people that need it have it, it's there. We don't need to invent anything, and nobody can decide to update Bitcoin, right? <laughs> so that's there. And for the other ones, the people that are like, eh, I still don't, eh, I, I need an app that is easy with a username and password. I don't want the, some of the steps that are that are involved with true decentralization. Well, they can have the coin bases of the world, or, you know, like Robinhood that's getting into it. Like they could just username, password, buy the coin, you can do what you want with it. Uh, and that's that. And most people will, uh, the, the overwhelming majority of people are going to get the most benefit from that model. All right. So you mentioned NFTs. And NFT trading volume is down nearly 97% since January. What are your thoughts? So, what's, I, 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 if you happen to have the stat, it'll help my answer. Do you know what the volume is for overall crypto? Does that, is that? No, uh, not for overall crypto. As well? No. But NFTs are down right. 97. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I know. I'm, I'm aware that the NFTs are down. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to know the you know proportion. So if crypto, because I believe that the entire markets are down. The stock markets, are like, you look at the stocks, everything except for the VIX is up. And apparently, <laughs> apparently, uh, what is it, collateralized? No, the, the CDS is um, the default swaps. Uh, apparently, those are through the roof. So, uh, so NFTs, the volume is down. Look. Everything that goes through its its uh, uh, well, everything that comes through in its popular, it becomes the bubble, the craze. Everyone's going onto it. We everyone knows that the NFT uh, uh, was in a state of of uh, you know craze, right? Like the tulip mania uh, phase of things. Uh, myself included, and it was very apparent. So it was obvious that that cycle was going to be a bubble that pops. And some things, uh, such as tulips, go up and disappear or whatever. Other things go through the bubble and then they settle back down into their maturity, such as Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's had its own set of volatility. I think NFTs have uh, are a tremendous variant on the technology behind cryptocurrencies. Uh, and I think that there's going to be some really innovative applications for it that are going to force us to rethink the way we categorize uh, assets. Well, let's just call it that. Innovative applications um, such as what? Such as, let's call it a membership uh, application, such as uh, uh, collaborative 
projects that are built from the ground up. Um, you know, there's endless examples of people get together, say, buy my NFT, and then they buy their NFT, and then 10,000 people have an NFT. They're like, we're going to buy a golf course with this NFT money. And then people that own the NFT can actually play on it, right? And then now you all of a sudden you have a golf course with, with a full fully sold out membership. Um, that's a normal business that anyone can, can uh, understand, except for instead of being a entrepreneur that goes to venture capital, whatever, to get investors before they build the business model. They first get the money, then they, then they build the business. So that forces us to rethink the order of which things happen. The structure of this particular golf course, well, there's an infinite number of examples that are similar and different to this. Um, and that's the type of application that I believe is going to be here to stay. So why, to your question, did volume go up and down? Everyone's buying JPEGs. Everyone wants to get rich. That is the initial reason why anybody wants to do anything. They don't care about decentralization. NFTs during that craze were anything but decentralized, right? There was one website where you can buy them from. Um, and they can decide whether or not to like let you play in their marketplace. Uh, and then that bubble is down. Everyone got rich, lost money, whatever happens. But all of a sudden, you have a lot of value left over, things that have survived through it. The Board Ape Yacht Club being one of them. There's pictures of monkeys. But those pictures of monkeys now have an entire like business line. They have parties. They have like uh, affiliations with all these massive brands that like they, they've reinvented the way uh, uh, you know you have these ambassadors, like, these brand ambassadors work. Like it's it's pretty cool stuff. So. It's a good thing that that, that volume is back down. That means we're ready to go to the next stage, which is less of a craze, less of a let's get rich, less of a hype, and more of substance. And Jamie, my final question for you is what advice would you give to people trying to break into crypto or people who are already in but don't really know what they're doing? Well, I don't know what getting into crypto really means, but I'm going to go with the assumption that it means they want to use that, add that to their portfolio for investments. Um, if people want to just transfer money from Mexico to the US, such as myself on a regular basis, just download an app and they'll do everything behind the scenes for you. You register, punch in your bank account details and magic happens. So you've used crypto without realizing that you used crypto. For people that want to get rich or whatever assets, diversify, whatever fancy words we want to put around it, uh, I would recommend them, especially if they're young, to go in there and lose, well, actually, you know, all age groups, including my dad, go in there and lose money, right? Get it out of the way. <laughs> It applies more for younger people because uh, more experienced individuals may have already learned the lessons about how and why you lose money and get greedy and emotional and stuff. But for the younger uh, individuals, go in there and lose money, get that emotional component out of the way, get the mistakes out of the way, you click the wrong button, whatever. And then you can actually start focusing on the, okay, now what am I purchasing? Why is this worth stuff? What affects it? And, uh, and you're doing this rationally. Um, eventually it happens to everybody, but I think that it's much better that you do it at the very beginning when you're just using like, I'm really careful money as opposed to, okay, now I think I'm a genius. And it turns out you're wrong, such as people that might have done, uh, a lot of people did lose a lot of money with, uh, with this Luna of risk-free returns of 20 something percent. Um, uh, anyways, okay. <laughs> so go in there, have fun, lose money. And then, and then once you get it, then you can start pushing forward. Okay. So y'all heard them. Go lose some money. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Not a problem. Thank you so much for having yes. me.